Hey, what's up? It's Matt. We are live on Facebook, Insta, see where we at, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. And we are here today with a special guest out in Lovett, Texas, Caitlin Silva. Welcome, Caitlin. Hi, glad to be here. How is the heat in Texas today? Not too bad today, at least so far. So we'll see as it heats up. It's It's been high 90s a lot recently. So yeah, we complain about like 85 or 90 here in Kentucky. So I'll let you keep the high 90s out there. Yeah, 99 has been pretty much our average for a while. Wow. So yeah. I found you on Amazon. Uh, I commonly go on Amazon and, and find books because uh, you might not know me as well as everybody watching this. I, I work in the restaurant marketing world. I've been in restaurant marketing since 08. I've been in marketing since 99. And I always try and buy books that to me catch my attention. And I bought your book. You know, yeah. How to rock restaurant management. And uh, right now you're rocking also being a mom and teach other people. I see the little one on your lap there. Uh, your book caught my attention because I, I grew up around uh, a couple friends of mine in the business world who yeah. are freak restaurant managers. And I've seen awesome managers and I've seen really bad managers. And while I've, I, haven't, I haven't finished the book completely. I've read through a lot of it. Uh, it's got some good stuff in here. So I guess first, tell us your background and how you decided to write this book. <laughs> Yeah. So um, when I when I first came up with the idea, um, I was actually working with one of those managers that's really frustrating. And um, I I had just throughout my career um, seen different managers do different things. And um, and I'd always strived to to do all the things I teach in the book, like, uh, you know, focusing on team building and leadership. And uh, and so. I realized that there was a lot of managers I, I not only that I worked with, um, but that were just coming up in the industry at the time. Um, it really just were trying to figure it out. And they were in the same place that I was when I had started. And um, and there was just there was a lot of issues that were going on. And so my mentality was I wanted to write something that would be kind of like a, a guidebook that would help new managers and managers that just were having a hard time or um, not seeing the result they wanted to, to have something to have those insights and to be able to um, have practical tools to actually implement during their shift um, and see changes with their team and, um, and with their restaurant and with their morale and all of those things um, that, that I had witnessed, you know, when managers I was working with and um, just, just having, having something to really help them because I, I at the time i hadn't seen any similar books out there that were specifically for those in the trenches helping them to really master like you know leadership in the restaurant not just running a shift but but having the the mentality and and the stuff behind the, the scenes you know not just the practicals like you know swiping cards and helping all of that you know so <laughs> yeah yeah i think yeah. that what i've seen is a lot of managers, you know, they work their way up. And if you work your way up with a bad manager teaching you uh, and you learn bad skills, you know, I've seen restaurants where I walk in and you can tell that nothing happened pre-shift. You can tell nothing happened the night before. Uh, I've witnessed, uh, I had a, a client of mine I worked with for, I guess, seven years where we managed the marketing for six, seven restaurants under the, you know, guidance of one company. And I always wow. would up and I would see the difference in different managers and it was like different locations because you could see like one location was actually run by the one of the owner's sons and he treated the management the team so much different. Like I saw it in your book and talked about, you know, there's a balance between being a manager and being a friend to everybody and showing favoritism. And then yeah. I go another location and that guy was like rolled with an iron fist and like if you looked at him wrong. It was a bad day. And it was just wild to see the morale different. Then you'd go to the other one, which another guy named Bob ran. And Bob, in my mind, was the best manager I had ever seen. And everybody loved him. Nobody broke his rules. Nobody was his friend. Nobody was his enemy. But they respected him because he was a high manager. Yeah. And that's exactly what I talk about um, very early on inside the book is, exa is exactly what you're talking about is – uh, you know, how those different managing styles actually play out with the team and how it affects the, the restaurant, um, how it really affects not just the the people, but your your guests and your your just everything. 
um, and and how it's how it's really critically important to have that balance um, to come from a place of approaching it with you know professionalism and um, you know having your team's respect so that you do get the results. Um, they know you care, but, but not too much. <laughs> you know, just having the proper boundaries with your with your team as well. So. So there's five topics in the book. I got my cheat sheet here. We got approach and how you approach your people, how you approach the job, uh, taking authority. And I think that's a tough one a lot of times, especially if you're younger. I was in my mid twenties in charge of a $15 million a year boat dealership uh, with our family that we created from scratch. And I became a manager a little too quick uh, yeah. with too much arrogance, probably uh, guest relation, trust within management and team. And then last but not least mindset, the, one thing that caught my attention in the mindset part, because I'm real big on that, I think a lot of people approach things with the wrong attitude that they that there's always a problem or they can't get it done. But one thing I like there that I, I try to do myself that I think you talked about was showing appreciation because I think a lot of times, you know, like you watch professional sports, you know, the, the coach is the first one to take the blame for a loss and the one to give it to the quarterback when they win and the team to win. I think that it gets missed a lot because managers that come up in the restaurant world or any world probably don't get it. And so when they don't get appreciation shown, then they might not pass it down. Yep, absolutely. 100%. Um, so I'll, I'll speak to both of the points that you made uh, on authority. Um, I think you're absolutely right. I think that there's two extremes. Um, there's either the, the people that they let their power go to their head, you know, and they go on a power trip and, and it just, and then they end up having all kinds of issues going on. People don't, they don't respond the right way or it just causes tension or, uh, you know, they have to kind of learn humility um, while still enforcing the rules of what's going on um, or on the opposite end. Yeah. Being timid or uh, just not sure, not sure how to really um, get people to, to listen and respect them and do what they're asking um, without stepping on toes, you know? So, um, there is a balance there, and 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 I, I talk about that. Um, and I think, like you were mentioning about appreciation and mindset, um, I think you know a lot of times managers get really focused on everybody else. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I have all these people I'm responsible for, and there's all these different things going on, and they forget that it starts with them. You know, so you have to you have to check your own attitude and your own mindset when you're walking in the door, um, regardless of what's going on in your day or whatever, because. Um, and I was guilty of this too, of just not realizing how much in a, of an effect I actually had. You know, I think a lot of managers don't realize that uh, they do impact the, the entire restaurant, the entire team, everything going on. And so, um, you know, making sure you're in the right headspace and the right attitude and, um, and then sharing that with your team and getting everybody else excited and pumped up and ready to go um, can just really have, it can be night and day for the type of shift that you have um, inside of your your restaurant on a daily basis. So, yeah, I had a friend of mine tell me, he's like, Matt, you know, I look at it that if I can make their day, I need to because I don't know what they're coming from. They might be coming from a house that's chaos. They might be coming from a bad meeting with family. They might be stressed out of her kids, over money. That when yep. they come in here, I got to find a way to start with a clean slate and get them excited and get them on my side uh, and make their day better. So, I guess let's transition to what you're doing now because you got a couple of things. One, you're the uh, you're rocking it as a mom with three kids, the newest little one there on your lap. But you're also yeah. teaching uh, others how to write books. So tell us about that part of your life. Yeah, so um, I I'll I'll give you the abridged version. Um, so you know we started with the how to rock restaurant management, um, and that one was really like my gateway. Um, I had always known that I wanted to write and, uh, that, that was, that was really my passion and restaurant had been kind of just what I, what I did to provide for my family. Um, so, but writing this book showed me how to, uh, really ha like the publishing process, the, the publishing world in a whole new way. It, uh, it was my first bestseller. Um, and, it, and I, that was really my, my, like I said, my gateway. And so it really uh, opened up the doors for me to uh, talk to my husband about staying home and, and being a mom. And so that was really a gift. Um, and because, you know, any, any of anybody that's a mom or dad watching knows how, how precious it is to, to have time with your kids. So I didn't want to miss out on anything. Uh, and so then I had a lot of friends that were asking me, well, you know, how did you do it? And, 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 you know, 
we want to know the secrets, you know? Um, so I just started kind of giving friends advice and helping them. And, um, and that's when I really discovered that this was, uh, what I was really passionate about. And, uh, you know, I was good at restaurant management. I could, I could do it well and I could, uh, I could play the game or whatever, but, um, but I, I felt really lit up inside about helping people to see their dreams come true through seeing their books published and, uh, and having impact and inspiring other people and, and all of that. So, uh, so yeah, so kind of just went all downhill from there. And, um, I just started, uh, you know, focusing on helping people to, uh, overcome, you know, blocks and time and, and struggles and, you know, people struggle with all different kinds of, of mindset challenges and stuff when it comes to writing books. And so I help them to overcome that and uh, get their book written. So what's been one of the biggest things you've seen? Cause I, I always hear that, you know, there's a certain percentage of the population that want to write a book and there's a very small percentage that actually do. I've yes. written two, I've got two books under, I'll call them under construction right now. I've got a third I wrote that I never published cause I didn't really like it, but okay. What, what have you found on one of the biggest reasons people can't get the finish line? Well, um, like I said, it's it's ultimately a lot about the mindset battle. And so I think that many writers um, underestimate, you know, what it really takes to write a book. Um, there is this very common misconception and myth that you're supposed to be able to just like have an idea and then sit down and then just like bust it out, you know, and just like sit down and write and that's it. And that's really not the reality. Um, so many writers just try to sit down and write and they get stuck. And then when they get stuck, then they're like, uh, okay, now what do I do? You know, or, or they end up wasting a lot of time uh, writing and then erasing and rewriting and uh, scrapping that idea, moving to a different idea. And it's just all over the place. And so um, what, what really helps them is having a, um, knowing exactly what mindset blocks to to address and to overcome. Um, so we do a lot of foundational work to get them ready before they even start writing. Um, and then once they have a clear, they're very clear on their content, they're clear on the on the book itself, then they start writing. Um, and then from there, it's just a very like step by step process. So I, you know, we, we go through the, the writing process um, and I, I help them set goals and meet those goals regardless of you know time or life going on or children or whatever you know um and then once we have once the book like you know bare bones are written then of course then you, you know you go back and start adding layers and making it look more pretty and editing and fleshing it out and all of that i think um a lot of writers expect it to be perfect on the first draft and i always tell them that done ugly is better than not done at all <laughs> and uh that there's a reason why it's called the first draft because there's supposed to be multiple drafts uh to make the book how it's gonna finally be when it's published so yeah does that answer yeah. your question oh no, it does i i think that it, it, it's amazing the number of friends i've talked to that have accomplished a lot in their life they've traveled they've lived uh, I mean, a friend of my wife's right now, Tracy, is a mom of 10. She homeschooled every one of them until they got to anywhere from sixth to eighth grade. Then they went on to school. I mean, that's a story. I mean, I, and, yeah. and they're, all, they're all super smart. We took one of them on vacation with us last month, and I've never in my life been around a kid that is more, I don't even know, I, I felt like a terrible parent. Like he was raised so well. And I told her that. I'm like, hey, you need to bottle that. Like, Put it in a book and teach people and she's like you know the idea to her was foreign but to me it's like that's a gold mine because there's women out there thinking hey i'm gonna homeschool my kid or i'm gonna raise my kids on my you know on my own or how could i do this and they're looking for advice and you know i'm amazed the amount of books that aren't written uh it seems like there's topics that are produced so often online but then you get on amazon and whatever you have a topic for oh there's no book for it yeah absolutely yep and, and actually, I, I love that you mentioned that, too, because um, it's so true. I feel like uh, one thing that people often have a, a block about is they think, oh, well, my book's already been written or well, somebody else will write it or uh, there's already so many other books on that topic. And so they don't think it's necessary. They don't think that it's going to actually make a difference. Um, and instead, I, I like to address it from the mentality of, you know, everybody's unique. Everybody has unique experiences and so we all have something different to, to bring to the table and you never know uh you know someone could hear something a million times and then for some reason they hear it the way you said it and it finally sinks in you know it finally makes a difference for them 
And so I, I, I encourage writers that, um, you know, your, your book, uh, your, there are readers that, that need it. And I believe that they deserve to have it just as much as you deserve to see that dream inside of you um, become manifest, become a book that is available for, for the people that need it. So, um, so yeah, absolutely. I think that um, it doesn't matter what the topic is, that it, it is needed. Absolutely. So, yeah, and I, I think you hit on something there also. I, I told a friend of mine this who uh, he's Puerto Rican and he was talking about so many people are doing a certain thing. And I'm like, dude, and there's not many people that are Puerto Rican doing it. And there's a whole segment of the population that you might resonate more than somebody else or, you know, my style of writing or my voice in a video might not resonate with this audience because uh, it's relatable. I think we all relate right. to different people, different walks of life, uh, you know, genders, ethnicity, whatever. But also that story can be told because you could take, you know, this, the homeschooling topic, because you mentioned that earlier, you could take 10 women who raised 10 kids each that all homeschooled them. And they're all 10 going to have a completely different story that might relate completely different with, with somebody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I guess closing tip, what would be something that you would advise? Like, well, one, how can people get in touch with you? How can they find more about uh, working with you, getting help on writing books? How would they find you? So, yeah. Um, sorry, baby, baby noise on the camera. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if anybody um, wants to get in touch, um, my website is theauthormentor.com. Um, or they can find me on anywhere with, with the author mentor. That's my business name. Uh, so they're, they're always welcome to message or reach out. Um, and, uh, the, the, I guess parting tip, I would really just say that, um, I guess there's, there's two different types of people that might be watching, you know, if it's restaurant or, or people that want to write a book. Um, so the, the biggest thing for people that are, you know, in the restaurant field, um, is to just always be open to feedback, never stop asking questions and learning. Uh, because I really believe that, you know, you can learn all the tactics and you can learn all the all the different tricks in the book and all those different things. But um, when, when you never stop learning and you never stop growing, never stop improving, um, then you'll never you'll also never stop uh, getting where you want to go. So, um, so absolutely. And then as far as for I mean, there, there may be people all over the world in all kinds of different industries. Uh, with the whole book thing. And I would just say um, kind of what I touched on earlier that, um, you know, if you have a, if you have a desire to write a book, then, then do it, pursue it. Um, don't ever give up on it because it's worth it. There are people that need it. Um, and you never really know um, how far that reach can go or, or the impact that can have, you know, anywhere in the world. So. Yeah. And I, I can attest to that two things there. Like I, it was intimidating to me when I first started thinking about writing a book, and I was trying to type it and write it. And somebody I, I talked to just as a complete joke, they said, Matt, what are you really bad at? And I said, probably OCD, you know, ADHD, sitting at a computer typing stuff for two or three hours. They said, what are you really good at? I said, I do a lot of video. Why don't you write your book via video? I said, what are you talking about? They said, put your camera on a tripod, sit in your backyard, look at the woods and have an outline and talk the chapter through. So yep. I was like, <laughs> and I did it. That's how I've written a couple books now. Uh, yeah. it worked, it's worked really well. And I think that that's the toughest part of people thinking there's the only one way to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's true. I've, um, you know, video is a great method. I've also seen uh, people that will get like a recorder app or something on their phone and they just, while they're, maybe they commute and they just drive and they'll just talk and they'll talk their book on their recorder or their phone um, and then get it transcribed and, you know, knock it out. And uh, the average person, I, I don't remember the exact number, but um, most books can be talked out within a couple of hours. So um, that's a great, that's a great point. So, yeah, I think that, uh, like I said, most of the time what holds people back is the mindset game. And um, if they can just uh, get, either get the support they need or uh, just stick it through no matter what, they'll, they'll get to that goal. So. Awesome. Well, so you can get on Amazon. You can find how to rock. I got the light on here. How to rock restaurant management, how to rock restaurant management. You can go to the author mentor.com and check her out. And Caitlin, we appreciate it. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.